Happy Halloween, everyone. We are set for a big week in the stock market, and we have some important things to cover for tomorrow. So the first thing we want to talk about is what happened in the stock market today. It was kind of a flat day, but just like last week, this week will get crazier and crazier as the week goes on. We have some huge data points set to release in terms of interest rates on Wednesday. We have a week full of earnings and just crazy movement set in store. And at the end of today's video, we have a $4.25 million options trade that you definitely want to keep your eyes on. It is crazy. We have a great video today, but Tom, we're not wasting any more time. Let's get right into it. Yeah, Mike, today the Dow actually posted its best month since 1976 here, which is a pretty big surprise to me considering all the volatility that we've seen and the market actually pulled back a little bit today. But you can see the SPY obviously had a Pretty big intraday resistance right around 387.50. We saw one, two, three, four bounces or so off of that level. And at the end of the day, Mike, we started falling right back off to the downside. So I know the SPY was continuing up off of last week's amazing uh, trend back to the upside, but it looks like we are now pulling back into some of these big events, Mike. And I know one of the biggest events this week is obviously going to be the interest rate decision coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. And then Powell will speak at his press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. But be ready for volatility, guys. We saw a lot of red creeping into the market today ahead of these events. And uh, it looks like, Mike, they're still pricing in a 75 basis point increase right here. Looks like there's an 88% chance on the CME watch tool. Yeah, so here's what you guys need to know. This week will be very, very important because essentially the Federal Reserve is going to increase interest rates yet again. Right now, they're set to increase interest rates by 0.75% or 75 basis points. Uh, this is expected, but also it's very important because when they increase interest rates on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, will also speak about the economy and what you know the top dogs of the Federal Reserve are seeing in the market right now. This is extremely important because when you have arguably some of the most powerful people in the world speaking, especially related to the U.S. economy, you definitely want to pay attention to that. So this week's going to be very important because of that event. And again, it'll be on Wednesday, but it is very common to see volatility throughout the entire week in situations like these. Yeah, you definitely see a lot of volatility. It seems like every month, Mike, or every month and a half or so, whenever we get these meetings, obviously it brings in a ton of volatility throughout that whole week. So be ready, guys. I know that obviously we're already seeing that this week with the SPY extremely choppy today. I know, Mike, we do see a lot of up and down price action as well heading into these events. And yeah, that kind of played true again today, just very choppy, very slow. But we did actually see some parts of the market do better than others. And one stock I really wanted to talk about today, Mike, is FSLR. This stock is really continuing up off of earnings last week. It's up 9.72%, and it's actually making yearly highs. Look at that daily chart. This stock, is it's, it's, it's extremely strong right now. It's exploding. Keep it on your watch list for a possible continuation up tomorrow. If we do get that continuation up above like 148 or 149, then I will look at it for a possible day trade. But I will say, Mike, it is extremely high. I would only trade this one pretty quick. I don't think I'd hold this one up here at the top. Gotcha. Yeah, it definitely had a great day today and it has a lot of momentum. So good stuff there. Uh, one stock I'm really watching is WEAT. I know I mentioned this one in yesterday's video and today it popped by around 5%, which is awesome. But this one is more of a play over like the next couple weeks or so. Uh, basically what happened is Ukraine and Russia had an agreement where Ukraine was allowed to export their grain to the rest of the world, uh, especially with Turkey being involved too. Uh, and long story short, Russia has suspended that deal, at least right now. So Ukraine should is not technically allowed to export their grain out to the rest of the world. And it's not like, like grain is not something that has demand that fluctuates too much. It's like a necessary part of the world and you know, it, it helps feed people, right? Like the demand for grain doesn't really fluctuate too much, but when you have the supply get hit severely, 
usually that makes prices rise. So I'm really watching WEAT. This is a wheat fund uh, ETF. Uh, the prices have started to rise a little bit, but historically, whenever we see any sort of uncertainty with you know, uh, supply, especially like we saw earlier this year, this ETF does tend to pop up quite a bit. So it's definitely on my watch list. Yeah, Mike, earlier this year, or I, yeah, I should say earlier this year, whenever all that stuff started happening with Russia, initially, you guys can see how much wheat was seriously exploding. And with, and with this deal uh, that Russia is doing, Mike, this is obviously not good, or I should say with the deal that they're kind of uh, stopping now. So pretty crazy. We're seeing a really good support bounce there, right around $8.50. And that is still holding true up into today. I'm going to leave this uh, arrow up here on the chart, Mike, because it looks like if we start to break above 950, we might start to get back up to highs with how volatile this can get. So watch it, guys. That's a, that's a really big event. And obviously, Mike, uh, it's going to be very important going forward, obviously, like you said, for the whole world, not just for the stocks. But nonetheless, my second stock today, Mike, is DraftKings again. I know I talked about this one yesterday. I really like this current setup. We're bouncing off of a really good trend line here on the daily chart at the bottom. It doesn't really line up perfectly, but we are seeing a, a nice recovery here. We're up 4.5%, and I feel like we might be able to run up to the $16.50 or maybe $17 resistance at some point this week. Yesterday, Mike, I talked about a big breakout up above $15.30, and we actually saw that today in a huge way. So nice to see DraftKings running up. I will say, though, they have earnings coming up later in the week. So be a little prepared for that. Maybe uh, just play the breakout for the next couple of days. Maybe leave it alone on Thursday, of course. Gotcha. All right. So one stock I'm watching very closely is Tilray. T-L-R-Y. So this is a marijuana stock. For those of you who don't know, Tilray stock straight up exploded today, up by 12%, as did many other marijuana stocks. But essentially what's happening is we are having Congress getting very, very close to making it easier for legal marijuana companies to access banking. And Tom, can you fill us in a little bit more on uh, what else is going in terms of, uh, I guess you could say like cannabis convictions and stuff like that? Yeah, so it looks like they're also looking to erase criminal records for uh, cannabis convictions according to uh, Mar the marijuana moment, which I guess is like, uh, I guess like a media outlet for marijuana. But nonetheless, Mike, that's pretty crazy that they're doing all this stuff. It's obviously going to be really big, though, that, that these cannabis companies will be able to kind of use a lot of a lot of banking services, because right now, obviously, cannabis is still illegal on a federal level. So that makes it very difficult for these companies to deal with banks and getting loans. So as we know, Mike, in the business world, loans are almost how a lot of businesses get going. So these are uh, these companies need more loans. They, and it looks like that might start to come through. So huge news today, Mike, up 12 percent on Tilray. Uh, MSOS, which is a U.S. cannabis ETF, was up 7%, and the MJ ETF was up 7.5%. So like you said, huge moves across the market, and this is honestly some of the best news I've seen in a long time, Mike. Some people have said that marijuana companies getting access to banks is almost even better than legalization, so hopefully this helps them. Yeah, so just so we're all clear, nothing has officially happened just yet. It's just Congress is getting closer, or as the news article says, very close to just, you know, easing up on some of these regulations for these marijuana companies. Tom, looking at Tilray uh, stocks, yeah, on the Tilray stock chart, we can see for the most part, it does nothing but fall straight down. But if we look back further throughout history, basically all of these marijuana stocks follow the same exact pattern. They do nothing for months and months and months, and then out of nowhere, they just all go crazy. So you can look at Tilray, you can look at MJ, you can look at CGC, you can look at ACB. These stocks do nothing just for months, and then out of nowhere, they'll just go on this explosive, crazy uptrend. A lot of times, just any sort of event or catalyst or good news can spark that uptrend. So I'm watching Tilray and some of these marijuana stocks very, very closely over like the next couple of weeks and months because of one, the news we just talked about, but also two, we have midterms coming up too. Yeah, midterms are going to be big. And I remember, Mike, a, a couple weeks or even a couple months ago, Biden actually came out and talked about 
uh, looking at reviewing the legalization classification for marijuana. So I know that that might even be interesting in the marijuana sector too. I know that helped a lot of stocks pop up on the couple of days that that news started popping too. So crazy stuff, Mike. I think these marijuana stocks might start to go back on a pretty good uptrend. Definitely keep them on the radar and it's definitely looking solid, Mike. And you know, it's been a long time coming. These poor marijuana stocks are down a lot. When I first started trading, Mike, uh, some of the first big success I had in the market was actually on CGC. So it makes me feel good to see these kind of coming up again. Yeah, good stuff. They're they're definitely crazy movers to uh, say it uh, bluntly. Um, but Tom, some other things to keep in mind for the rest of the week is earnings. Uh, earnings has been crazy over the past couple of weeks. Can we go over back on the chart just to uh, look what's on the schedule for tomorrow? Yeah, so for tomorrow, guys, it's going to be probably the biggest day of the week, maybe besides uh, Thursday there with Coinbase, Block, and PayPal, Moderna, and stuff like that. But tomorrow, we're going to see SoFi, Uber, Pfizer, British Petroleum, <laughs> Lilly, Marathon, and Philips 66 all report tomorrow before open, even Toyota down there, which is kind of interesting. So a lot of stocks before open, then after close, we have AMD, which is going to be one of my favorites for the week, along with Airbnb, Energy Transfer, uh, Chesapeake Energy, and a few more. So pretty big, Mike. AMD is obviously a huge name, along with SoFi, Uber, and Pfizer. So a lot of big ones are going to report, and I'm sure AMD is going to affect Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, maybe a few other chip makers, too. Yeah, so I know I said this in yesterday's video, but I'm still just like waiting, counting down the days until Friday when we have that DraftKings earnings report. Uh, DraftKings is one of my favorite stocks for the long term. I'm not necessarily hoping and praying it goes up on Friday. Of course, I would love to see that, but it's just like a longer term play. Um, I, you know, as as any stock you own, you would like to see it go up, but it's definitely going to be uh, my favorite for the week. Yeah, I mean that that's probably my favorite one too, Mike. Of course, I mean I'm a I'm a shareholder of DraftKings, so of course I'm going to be watching that. But like I talked about yesterday, I feel like Coinbase and even Square or Block might be pretty big, and then uh, AMD will be pretty big tomorrow. So keep them on the radar, guys. I'm sure we'll see a lot of a lot of huge movement, and I think Pfizer is a bit of a a bit of an outlier for tomorrow morning, Mike. I know on the daily chart that stock has also been recovering up in a huge way. And then another thing I want to emphasize is with these earnings plays, everyone loves to jump into them before the earnings report, whether it be with shares, calls, or puts. But guys, keep in mind there's so much opportunity to play the stock after the report. Uh, don't feel the need to gamble right before earnings are about to be released. You can get in after the earnings is already released and then just ride the momentum wave, whether it's to the upside or the downside. So keep that in mind. I know it's not as... Um, as like hyped driven or i guess it's not as exciting as you know you know dumping a bunch of money into calls or puts ahead of earnings but honestly it's just safer and honestly just a better strategy yeah it really is i mean i know a lot of people like you said love to gamble on it and it can be fun you know maybe a, a couple times a year here and there might be pretty fun sometimes but really try to limit that guys i know some people find success with it but in the longer term mike i know most people that we've known who do this long term normally don't end up doing too well. So uh, you guys can take that for what you want. But Mike, I know people love to gamble and I'm sure we'll still see it. It looks like AMD is really starting to consolidate up here around $62. I can't wait for this one. Yep. All right. So Tom, it is now time for the momentum plays. With the first one, we have Redfin to the upside, RDFN. RDFN. Yeah, let's go ahead and make them break above $5 and six cents. It's honestly, that's right around a pretty big $5 resistance. All right. With the next one, we have a BABA also to the upside. Baba, that was really nice to see this one popping this morning. Go ahead and make them break out above $64.80. All right. And then with the last one, we have GLD, but we need both directions. Gold. Nice. Yeah. Two directions here. So multi dimensional, as they might say, but. Go ahead and make gold break down below 151.90. Looks like that's like the low of day there today. And if gold does start running up and they break above 152.50, watch for a breakout there. There was a pretty big wick there on Friday. 
All right, so we're watching GLD for a potential day trade to the upside tomorrow, only if it breaks above the level Tom listed. And the same goes for Baba and Redfin. And then we are also watching GLD for a potential day trade to the downside tomorrow, only if it breaks below the level Tom listed. But it is now time for the $4.25 million trade to watch. So I was uh, doing some order flow hunting today, and I saw a very unusual trade with NU. So we don't talk about this stock too often, but NU, uh, basically $4.25 million went into the NU five strike call options for January 19th of 2024. This stock is up 9% today. Uh, the strike price is right at the money. Uh, some important things to know with this one, it is like a Brazilian banking company and a, an election just like wrapped up in Brazil lately. Um, I was looking at this stock, you know, it, it, it definitely stands out when you have, you know, over $4 million going into an at the money call option with, you know, over a year's worth of time. It's tempting for me. I don't think it's a bad setup, um, but honestly, it's not my favorite setup out there. Um, last week, we talked about CGC calls to the upside with a whale who traded those ones. Um, this NU call play, it doesn't look bad. I just feel like there's other better opportunities out there. But at the same time, if you guys want exposure to, I guess you could say a foreign country whose stock kind of does whatever it wants, that's not a bad thing either. Yeah, exactly. That That is a really big thing, Mike. Uh, I know, especially with the way our markets have been the past year or so, it would definitely be good to have some stocks in there that won't be overly correlated to the SPY or the Dow or anything like that. So definitely watch NU. And like you said, Mike, we've seen a lot of big whale plays recently really pop off. Like CGC was one of them. Like you talked about, I remember Walmart was another one from a couple weeks ago, and that one's still flying up. So really pay attention to these guys. Like, Whenever you see these whales putting this much money into plays, you just have to pay attention. You know it. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. You'll see our videos more often, and we post brand new videos every single day. So definitely subscribe. Uh, Tom, I am pretty excited, especially for Wednesday this week, um, besides the earnings. You know, anytime we see these interest rate hikes, it always brings in volatility. Lately, it's been the bad type of volatility to the downside. But on average, uh, these types of events with the FOMC interest rate hikes are normally good for the markets. Yeah, sometimes like in the past, like obviously heading up into 2022, we saw a lot of upwards movement. And I know a lot of that has to do, Mike, with uh, obviously at the time, Powell kept touting transitory and obviously all that stuff. And he was kind of saving the markets there for a little while. Now, obviously, they've been a lot more hawkish. So I'm curious, Mike, hopefully they'll start to say some stuff where, where they can maybe start to slow down rates eventually. But as they keep reiterating, until inflation gets down to, you know, 2 to 2.5% or maybe even 4%, you know, they're going to keep uh they're going to keep raising rates. So I'm curious what they talk about Mike and hopefully they talk about inflation starting to fall a little bit. Here we go. Uh, I also want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, which is RK in the Stocked Up Discord chat. You've been in the chat for almost two years now and your activity has definitely been increasing lately. So definitely keep it up. Tom, do you have any last minute thoughts or anything uh, going into tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I was really watching the SPY. I know earlier I said there was a big 387.50 resistance there. There's also a pretty big support down here right around 385 even. So I think this is going to be a pretty important range to watch tomorrow, Mike. Like we said, the market was very choppy today. Uh, if the SPY starts flushing down below 385, I think we might start to see a bit of a sell-off. And Watch those earnings tomorrow. You know, we have SoFi, Uber, Pfizer all reporting in the morning, and that can definitely uh, start to impact the market at least a little bit. So watch those guys. Uh, that's going to be a big day. And that support on Spy Mike is going to be the big thing I'm watching tomorrow, because if we break below that, I'm going to really start looking at some intraday puts. Yep, it's going to be a crazy week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, and let's have an amazing week.